You want to count us down? Sorts of sports episode 26. Oh, it's 25. You just said it was 26. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> ah. I love you guys, but I hate you guys at the same time. We know. Okay. Feeling cool. As long as you know. Um, I'm missing you. So I we can call this the Le'Veon Bell episode. Wow. Because uh, you got. hate you. I love you. Shut up, man. <laughs> All right. So. Le'Veon Bell got cut from the Jets, and then a couple hours later, or a day or so later, whatever, he's with the Chiefs. Yep. What? How about Ryan starts Whoa. it off since he was Adam Gase's PR guy two episodes ago, talking about how Le'Veon was a rocker room cancer and how he was this, that, and the look, other, huh? Look, I, I think he's not going to get as many carries as everybody thinks he's going to get. Um, but, like, as a goal line guy – He's going to be more just a goal line guy. Yeah, no, I'm saying, but if you look at what they have, they have uh, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Hilaire. and then um, who was the other guy? Damian oh, Williams. Man, Damian Williams, yeah. I mean, he, he's an upgrade over Damian Williams, but I mean, I, I think they're just good. He's going to split carries with them. So he's done I more than, see him. than Hilaire has. What do you mean? He's more proven than Hilaire. Yeah, but he's he's a running back. They're down I know. Huh? I'm just saying. I think he's going to end up splitting carries. I don't think he's, he's more than just a running back. back. They but Clyde Edwards Hilaire can catch out of the back too. So I'm just can saying, what the fuck? What you know who you're talking about? <laughs> I haven't seen him play in two years, so no. Whose fault is that? It's your guys' fault. Whose? Gase. Look at all the people that after they leave him, they become amazing again. Tandy no, Hill got a hundred million I, or whatever the, the fuck. He's the worst coach in the NFL. I'm not. So why are you talking? Yeah, yeah, I are. haven't seen him play well in a long time. Because he's. With I'm the not Jets. saying he's not going to. I'm just saying he's not going to be their featured bat. That's all I'm he saying. might as well be. He might be. He on a veteran minimum. <laughs> I haven't seen him play. He's gonna. What does he, he have, don't like, need to? Five days before. You know what it is. <laughs> Does he know their scheme? Like, I don't I don't know. He's a good running back. I just don't know if they're going to feature him. That's all He's I'm a great running back. I haven't seen him play in so long. Because he's with the Jets. <laughs> and then he took a year off for his contract. And then he that signed with the, the Jets. Jets. Uh-huh. I know, because they gave him guaranteed money, which the Steelers don't do after certain – like, they yeah. front-loaded. Well, that's smart for the Steelers organization. Not so much for their players, but it is what it is. I'm excited to see him play. I mean, he's going to be on the Chiefs. They're going to win so much. So many wins. Uh, it, like, that doesn't change much for me, though. It, with them. It's, What do you mean? The offense is already amazing. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So. I mean, he's going to get wins now. He doesn't. Oh. He, can, he can ride the bench all year and get a Super Bowl ring. But probably. he's not going to ride the bench. I'm saying he could. Yeah, like. I'm saying they're they're really good without him. Like, yeah, they are. going to be better. I agree. I, yeah. But I'm I'm saying they're gonna have a like a three or more like a two headed monster out of the yeah. out of the backfield and their Clyde Edwards Hilaire is not as good on the goal line like visually as Le'Veon like Bell. So I mean and they're gonna have a bunch of goal line stands where it's either gonna be a touchdown to Kelsey or Le'Veon Bell running it in. Which sucks for me because I have Travis Kelsey in most of my fantasy leagues. Tag me in, coach. Tag me in. All yeah. right, so this is solidifying that Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs are New England 2.0. As far as what it is they're doing, robbing the rest of the league of talented players because you have players that know when I go to this organization, I'm going to have a shot at winning. Look, 
Le'Veon Bell, as far as what I saw when he did play for New York, showed me at least when I was looking at him that if it wasn't for the shitty schemes in which Adam Gates put in, he still has a lot of talent. Like, let's take a look for his last year. Last year, everybody talks about how much they sucked in this, that, and the other. Le'Veon didn't do this. Le'Veon didn't do that. Le'Veon has 789 yards on the ground. He had 461 yards receiving. If you want to talk about, like, a dude that was still getting it done, regardless of how shitty that scheme and what it is they were doing on And the line. And the line being complete and utter garbage. Then if you're looking as far as small sample size this year, you talk about the, uh, what the last game they played against Arizona, 13 carries, 60 yards for 4.6 yards a carry. Then he had a reception. Then the other game where he only ran six times, 14 yards, so the Russian attack was not doing anything. They, you, you look at that and you see that he had two receptions for 32 yards. So as far as still being that dynamic guy out of the backfield, to me when it comes to Kansas City, yes, Featured backs in the NFL do not happen anymore. You can name them probably on this hand. Uh, and when you're looking at them, it's featured back not in the sense of getting 30 carries. I think the only guy still doing that is Derrick Henry. Other than that, it's dudes that are be able to do everything. All you got to do is give them touches. The Alvin Kamaras, the Christian McCaffreys. So if you look at the Kansas City scheme, if they have uh, Hilaire and Bell both be able to run down your throats and give them both fresh – fresh spots, not to mention being able to have both of them split in the backfield with a Tariq Hill. You're, dude, the rich just get richer. If Patrick Mahomes was able to get to a Super Bowl with the talent he had last year, you can't under any circumstances tell me that having Le'Veon Bell on that team doesn't make them automatically a Super Bowl favorite. That's just what it is. I like mean, If they weren't already. If they weren't already. Like, this is just the rich keep getting richer. Adam Gase and what he's doing to the New York Jets is absolutely abysmal. I'm ready for him to get fired the same way that Dan Quinn, Dan, Dan Quinn and uh, what's his name got fired? Uh, Bill Dimitri. O'Brien. Oh. Uh, Bill O'Brien. Yeah. Adam Gase should have been fired from a strictly X's and O's talent standpoint before either of those men. There is no reason that Adam Gase and his cocaine eyes should have a job before Eric Bieniemy. There's just no reason for that. I feel terrible. Like, when I'm going in this year and I'm looking, everybody keeps asking me, like, I'm high on the Jets as far as talent goes, especially going into this year, when you looked at what it is they had when they started. Jamal Adams on a defense, and you have Le'Veon Bell and Sam Darnold who's shown flashes of being something special, and you can't muster up anything with that. Jamison Crowder is one of the best slot receivers in the league, and you can't muster up anything with that. That, to me, is abysmal. That team has enough talent, and I'm just hopeful that they get rid of that fucking coach before they ruin Sam Darnold's career because Sam Darnold could actually be something in this league. Yeah, Sam Darnold, he's got, he's got NFL. He's got an NFL arm. He's got an NFL – he's got the, the thing. Intangibles, mentality. Yeah, intangibles. Um, but, yeah, it's just like what you saw with Bill O'Brien. It's kind of what you saw with, with what happened with Matt Ryan and the Falcons. I think – you see flashes, but the coaching's not good enough to make it cohesive. And I don't know how Adam Gase is still – I mean, I think the Jets just know they're so bad um, that they might just be tanking this season at this point. And I don't know I'm why. Sorry. I mean, I'm no, sorry. I mean, they're playing so badly and they haven't fired Gase yet. I mean, why, why, why are you tanking? Like, if you're going to tank, it's usually going to be a team that needs a quarterback. They don't need a quarterback. Like, I think the perfect example is the one that you just gave, James, a few minutes ago, which was what Ryan Tannehill did in Miami compared to what he's doing in Tennessee. Like, so there, there's a lot of – to me, it's Adam Gase is the problem, the sole problem. There's a lot of going on with that front office in New York, and it has been for a very, very long time. But right now, if I'm going to look for anybody to blame as far as their current situation, is going to be Adam Gase. But there is something I want to push back on, which is something that I try to push back on a little bit with you, Ryan, when you were talking about Le'Veon Bell the other day. Under no circumstances have I heard from anybody that Le'Veon Bell is anything but the model team player in going in there to grind and get his shit done. In Pittsburgh, what it all came down to was that everybody understood and agreed that he deserved to get paid. Like, there wasn't anybody on the team that didn't say that. I think the only time you saw anything happening when the team started getting annoyed is when the reporters were in their face every day, all day, when's Le'Veon coming back? When's Le'Veon coming back? When's Le'Veon coming back? But I don't think that has anything to do with this character. It's not an Earl Thomas situation. It's not one of those things where you're looking at somebody who's a locker room cancer. You could just see the reaction of everybody, whether it be former teammates congratulating him for getting to Kansas City, or you see Patrick Mahomes just excited to have him. You don't necessarily get that when you have guys that are team cancers. And what, what a I, legendary gift. And what I also know is that Andy, Andy Reid is the number one coach as far as knowing probably about team cancers, and there's nothing that he would do to try to create some sort of detriment 
to his team. So what he's done is he's taken people that have that aura because of what people in the media or some other people. So, so like a Tyron Matthew, who people used to talk about just because he has a nickname and he does shit on the field and he's outspoken about how he feels about shit. Doesn't make you a locker room cancer, just means you're a man. Like maybe you're not going to beat to everybody's own fucking beat, but you're going to do your own thing. But when it comes to doing what you need to do or being able to look across on that field and know this guy has my back and then I can hold this guy accountable the same way that he's going to hold me accountable. That's all I see from Le'Veon. He wanted to get paid like a top flight back because he was getting treated like a top, like, top flight back. Mm -hmm. And if you see in the same way that Dak Prescott or any of these other guys get injured, especially from a running back position where they can't wait to replace your ass, get your fucking money. And if you can't get your fucking money, get a fucking Super Bowl. And it looks like Le'Veon's going to get a little bit of both because I think New York is still paying that ass. And now he gets yeah, fourteen million. And now he gets to go and win his championship. So kudos to Le'Veon. Everybody's talking about what he lost in that deal when it came to – he should have just accepted the deal from Pittsburgh because he has $70 million. He'd probably be already looking at getting on the bench or he'd probably already be looking at probably getting hurt. Who knows? You got to look at the guaranteed cash there on that. Le'Veon, you won this in the long term, especially if you win your chip. All I said is I want to see him play. Mm -hmm. He just didn't have an opportunity really with – the setup and at the Jets. So. Yeah, he did. But we already know what he's going to do. <laughs> but I'm saying he did play with the Jets. His numbers are there for the Jets. They're not running. He's not getting five or six yards of carry because it's not the Pittsburgh line and it's not that scheme. But he still was getting stuff done. If you were to tell me that you had a running back have over a thousand all purpose yards for the New York Jets last year, I'd be kind of surprised just seeing how pedestrian a lot of what it is they were doing on offense was. Mm -hmm. um, it's the. It's the three TDs that I think I have the biggest issue with. But they weren't scoring at all, and that's yeah. another thing. Is like him being the goal line back in Kansas City. It's gonna be him and Hilaire literally just switching off. Andy Reid's gonna have somebody fresh in there for Patrick Mahomes every snap, and that's gonna be a beautiful fucking thing. I didn't. Yeah, but I don't remember. The Chiefs can still did he be beat. Block, did he block? Is he a blocking back? Did he block? In he can block. He's I an all-around back. He's is he Clinton Portis level of blocking? No, but he can block. No, they have Travis Kelsey to block. <laughs> but none of that shit matters. They can still be beat. We you Here's expect a, you expect you expect Kansas City to score every time they, they touch the ball on offense, right? The thing the how you beat them is you run the ball and you take your shots downfield and you keep fifteen on the sideline. But that but that's the thing, is that you you're you're simplifying it too much. Because at the end of the day, what you're telling me right now is the same scheme you use against every single quarterback that's worth a grain of salt in the NFL. Who wouldn't want to play good defense and take shots and to keep the offense on the on the sideline? No, no, I'm saying it's about like time, not you time, can. Up, time up possess. Yeah, that's and, that's. But yeah, here's but the thing. That's, that's yeah, but team with a good running not, back that can not, do it. But here's the thing. That is not special to Kansas City. You're, you're talking about is a scheme to win any football game ever. Okay. But if you're, but if you're down by 21, and if you can do it, you can beat the Chiefs. Yes. Well, if you, if you can do it, you Hold on. if you can do it, you beat 100 percent of the teams. It, you're if you keep you their offense on the sideline. You run the ball out of play. That run doesn't the ball mean you automatically win. All right, let's take a look. If you want to run me back the win loss records of people that outscore their teams and also did I say anything about scoring? I said keeping them off the field. I'm take saying. Take a look. All right, so let's take a look at time of possession. Yeah. You can lose a game with good time of possession. What is the win loss record? What is the win loss record for teams that win the time of possession? I don't know. You could tell me because this is your part of the discussion. You're pushing back, so I'm pushing back because you're pushing something what? that just is general. I don't but know. It Let's works. See. <laughs> no shit, it works. It's like but okay. That's what so I'm why saying. are you arguing it? No, but what I'm saying is that you're giving me you're giving me Chris Weber analyst level shit. Where it's well, like, if you score more points, you win the game. Like, it's just that simple. Like, I don't no. understand what you're saying. What I'm saying is, if you make a concerted effort and you have a good running back to focus on running the ball and keeping 15 off of the field, you have a shot. So, in 2017, this is the stat that came up first, mm -hmm. uh, seven of the top 10 teams in terms of average time of possession made the playoffs. Because it's not, it's not rocket science. If you get a lead, you run the ball to keep the offense on the other side. Of the, on All right, the, on now, the side now you go deeper and tell me why teams haven't beat the Chiefs then. Because they're not as good. And they're down by – you can't run the ball for 15 minutes if you were to tell, if you're down by – Wait, Ryan, what are you saying? 
He said, you can't run the ball for 15 minutes if you're down by 20. Now, how do you get down by 20? Because they scored on you. And what did you do on offense? No, no. See, you're 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 getting lost. If you I'm were not getting tell, lost. No, if you were to tell you me, you didn't what, watch the game. If you I watched to, the Chiefs. <laughs> all right, so tell me what Oakland did on I defense. Just did. <laughs> tell me what Oakland did on defense okay. uh-huh. to prevent Patrick Mahomes. Week, I told you last week, and you were like, "Oh no, that doesn't work." Tell I'm me like, again. I told tell you what happened. Tell me again. We played spy. We rushed four the whole time. You don't blitz him. You keep this one is what defense I. Line. Exactly. This I told makes you more I, sense. I already said this. Yes, and I'm not arguing that point. What I'm saying for this. You did last week. Jesus Christ, James. And what I'm saying to you right now is oh, if you're you mad. Want to tell me this as far as X. Yeah, I hate having stupid arguments. Uh, if I'm having. <laughs> it's not an argument. It's a stupid argument. Yeah, We're I'm not having an argument. I'm arguing with you. So right now. On defense, if you were to tell me you're supposed to rush forward, keep a spy, that is a specific scheme that you're saying works against Patrick Mahomes. Now, yeah, what I would that's, thought, that's my home. Ah, yeah. That's so my home. Stop you. interrupting. What I oh. thought you were going to say was that that is how you're going to continue to do the attack. What I was going to counter was that if that is how you're supposed to play defense against Patrick Mahomes, he just made it infinitely more it's harder to do so if Hilaire and Bell are in the backfield that can split out and he doesn't have to stay in the pocket long. He doesn't need two, three seconds to get rid of the ball. So I'm saying is that right now what you've talked about on that defense. Now say that part again. What you talked about as far as Oakland being mm-hmm. able to rush four, mm-hmm. be able to rush four, keep a spy, and do what they need to do on defense to try to put pressure on Mahomes. I'm saying if you have another release valve like Bell, and like Hilaire, who can catch out of the backfield, if you split them out and you have Kelsey right here, you've just eliminated – they have to do something else than rush four. Because now if you're rushing those four and you don't have your defensive end ready to split out for the screen, you're just gonna fucked. Get d- dumped over the top all day. So this is what I'm saying. is that If we're talking about X's and O's as far as what it is that – this is why I love the Bell signing, was because it directly counted exactly what it is that you said that Oakland did successfully against they, Kansas City. It took them four days after that loss to put in a piece. I'd even, so I'd even go, as far as, I'd go as far as to say that the only reason Le'Veon Bell is on Kansas City is because of the Oakland game. I mean, the Las Vegas game. So I'm trying know. to give your team we'll credit. See. But, but if we'll you're going to come to me telling me that we'll the big key to everything is winning the time possession, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> We've lost to the Chiefs when we won the time possession. Because you so suck. So it's more than that. Yes, it is, and that's the point. If you played them, y'all would fucking lose too. <laughs> I didn't argue that point. I'm not bringing that point to the surface. And, Why? Because right, it's a whatever. dumb argument. Hey, hey and, whatever. Fine. And we'll we'll, we'll find see, out, cause, cause We'll I see. Play, because play them Monday. Yeah, you play them Monday. I feel like y'all are going to follow the same – somewhat game plan on defense and you have the you have the the pieces on offense to make shit happen if we're if we're healthy is john brown coming back he is listed as questionable to be a game time decision is the, the, the norman, only the only th- the only norman's other thing reappeared wow huh? has josh norman's penis come back uh i don't think anybody's seen josh norman um they, they tried to, they tried to find him inside the uh inside the stadium they thought maybe he went you know 50 feet underground uh, but they've been digging for a week and they can't find them. Rather be running with the bulls, man. Rather be running with the bulls. <sighs> yeah, you gotta. That's. I mean, you gotta he kind of did. You gotta do what Earl Thomas did, and then turn around and run with him. That's what I mean. How you get more <laughs> fucked up by no, by another grown man than you did when the father came to the bulls in Spain? Like you, you, you fucking up, bro. <laughs> well, you run away from the bulls, not towards them, and that's the he made a mistake. Well, then he needs to learn. He needs to take what he learned in Spain and apply it. <laughs> to Derek I mean. <laughs> Hey, Dude, I, I got, got nothing for like, that. I, I give him respect for trying, because goddamn. You get respect. You get you get some that's heart. That's you got to right? do. There's some like, heart that's, that's your job. Yeah, he's a heart guy. It's a that's heart point. Job. But then when you also have to acknowledge this with somebody said, oh, here you go, your little heart, and then rips it out of your chest, and then yeah. rips off your nutsack, and just stops them some bitches out <laughs> with his belly showing because his fucking jersey don't cover his goddamn. Like, I mean. Yeah, but, it, you could still die running with the bulls. It doesn't. It's that's it's unfortunate, you know. Well, I need to see Derrick Henry over there fucking stiff arming bulls because apparently that's how it's gonna work if we're using this line. Dude, it's like uh, it's like you, Habib used to fucking uh, oh yeah, uh, with fight bears. bears. Yeah, yeah. He wrestled bears. Yeah, that video was nuts. Der- Derrick Henry's just out there like running, running over bulls and cows and sheep and shit, just stiff arming everything in the farm. 
I'm just saying, it, it look, he looks like he needs to get put back in our Washington football team uniform because it's the only play from this from an organization. It's like that's what happens. Not to mention, it has happened to him before. Odell Beckham did it to him. Yep. And then – That was Ch- funny. Then chatted mad shit right after, and it was wow. deserved. Is that – Good one, Ryan. Chat shit, um, get thanked. <laughs> Jamie Vardy. Um, so I saw a bunch of stuff about COVID. Um this is like our weekly or bi-weekly COVID yes. update. So Nick Saban cleared coach. He's got three negative tests, three straight days. Yeah, so I'm talking about the NFL. I don't know if it was – well, I mean, that, that was a pretty big deal. Um, I don't know if it – I haven't read to see whether or not it was a false positive initially, but I think they did all the right things. Um, it looks like they did. The- I'm sure if they didn't, they would have swept that shit under the rug anyway, so we'd never know. Yeah. There, um, there's – there are a lot of teams. I think it was either four, four or five, because it was Indianapolis, it was New England, Jacksonville, right? Jacksonville, I think. Yeah, there's somebody else. There's one or uh, two other. Broncos running back Curtis, uh, running backs coach rather Curtis Modkins. Um, so they shut down that facility. Uh, Jacksonville Jags closed down their facility. Um, they're probably. Uh, it was Reichel Armstead. Uh, Jax Colts reopened their facility after everybody tested negative. Okay. I think New England reopened uh, today. Patriots canceled practice yeah, after sure. center James Ferentz. Ferentz? Fer- we'll go with Ferentz. Sounds like a white name. Um, mm. He's on the reserve COVID-19 list. Uh, dude, the poor – well, wait. They were going to play the Broncos, right? Who? The Patriots? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing. They're supposed to play tomorrow. And that's the thing is that the NFL is marching forward with it because they got – neither of those teams have buys anymore. So, like, right. there's not – there's no room anymore. Right now, the NFL, I think what they're doing over the course of each week – look, I ain't a conspiracy theorist. Sure enough, not a conspiracy theorist. What I will say, though, is that all the false positive tests – well, we're looking at what just happened this last week over the last couple of days with the teams that tested positive – all of us just had to do some soul searching or either Googling to try to figure out, right? Mm-hmm. Compared to when it was like each individual case, we could specify and start to blame everything. Tennessee is even a forgotten thing now. As what far happened as what to happened. that? Exactly, right? So I think that what you're going to end up seeing is that every week there's just going to be enough false positives that people just say, fuck it. Whoever plays, plays. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. And it's just going to be something that's just overwhelming in a direction in which they're just be like, we can't stop this thing and we're just going to soldier on through it. I think, I think it's with the... Yeah. Also, but. there's Falcon guy, uh, defensive end. Oh, and end. OBJ too, right? No, OBJ tested negative. He just had a flu, like a bug. But that's the thing. The false positive test, is there's, there's a waiting period from getting a P- PCR test, which is the one where they stick that goddamn Q-tip up your nose and dig around compared to the one that, like, the White House was using, where it's the rapid test. And the rapid tests are not at all going to help you as far as what it is you need to do. Not to mention – until, like you guys were talking about, as far as doing the individual bubbles or anything along those lines, as far as making sure that people are away from each other, mm-hmm. there's no real way you can contain this. I mean, what I'm starting to look at is there's going to be some organizations that just take it upon themselves to do it. Like, I, from what I understand, New, New England has been number one as far as saying, yeah, we're not traveling or we're shutting down without talking to the league. They've just been doing it. Because as soon as they oh, test yeah. anything positive, not waiting for any instruction from the league. And what the sense is for me is that you got Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick saying, we don't trust these fuckers. Yeah, and yeah, Bill Belichick said, when I found out about the positive test, I personally shut down the facility, told everybody to fuck off. And that's just what you have to do. And the league can't do anything about it because then they come off looking like the bad guy. So it's, it will be literally upon the teams probably to take the right steps, which, I mean, if you look at what happened with the Titans – and how that was a huge story, and now we just forgot about it. It's kind of clear that the league's not really it, – it doesn't seem like the league's really paying attention. Might not yeah. be. I will give credit for the Washington football team for being one of the best ran when it comes to this COVID shit. Um, that's one thing I guess we could have our, hang our hat on is right now you got – Dwayne Haskin had a tummy issue, and they wouldn't let his ass back in practice. So I'm just saying. Like, well, speaking, speaking of the Washington football team, uh-oh. there was an article that came out that um, – you want to talk about Kadeem? I haven't read the article because I haven't been in the right headspace to want to read it when I was hearing the quotes that were coming out of it. But I guess I got a, at least enough of a summary to know that they're 
directly saying that Dan Snyder told the director of cheerleader or what have you that there was a certain sort of body type that he was into when it came to the cheerleaders and basically get rid of the ones that didn't have flat tummies and big tits. And so it's like Washington Post is trying, I guess, to continue. Because what I, we talked about this was it, last week where it was kind of that story had just kind of gone away. Um, but from what it looks like, at least, Karen Washington, the rumors are, is that the reason we're not hearing anything from Dan Snyder is that there's so much more that's going to come out. And that right now all he's doing is kind of circling the wagons and being as close as he can to not being involved in anything day-to-day when it comes to the Washington team, which it, it kind of seems true. I mean, if we're looking at, like, what I was giving Ron Rivera credit for when it came to benching Dwayne Haskins, that usually in Washington, if you're talking about one of those guys who's one of Dan Snyder's guys getting benched or getting treated a certain way, we would have heard something else. There would have been another rumbling. Um, if you're looking at the hires that they're making or even when you're hearing the team president, Jason Wright, um, Jason Wright was talking about, like, what it is that he wanted to do to increase the game day experience of FedEx because he admitted the game day experience of FedEx sucks. So he's like, if we need to do what we need to do for sports betting, anything else, everybody who's ever tried to have that train of thought or that train of thinking or being that honest out in the public usually doesn't last long in Washington. And they just hired a new social media manager, I think is an Asian guy. Like, they're doing a lot differently as far as this team. And it just seems like Dan Snyder either knows something's coming down the pipe or he – so maybe he's just trying to – keep as much distance as possible and maybe everybody who can time to anything is now gone and maybe he could pay them off or do it. I don't know. He's probably trying to stay out of the media as much as possible. Cause it's the one thing is that like right now, I think the only thing that he's really looking for is a winning team when it comes to Washington to maybe help him out as far as from a publicity standpoint. Cause right now in Washington, all we're kind of saying is that fans are kind of taking my thought process, which is just like, oh, it actually seems like Dan's leaving us alone right now. Mm, that, that's a good thing. But we still don't like him. But maybe if he's a winning team, we come around on him. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I don't How know can what you come thinking. around on Dan Snyder? I can't, personally. I can't. Well, you know, I take that back because I have. I mean, there, there were times where I was on Facebook talking all kinds of shit about Dan Snyder, and then it would be the same guy who always tried to look for that silver lining when it came to him local kid that got to be able to own his favorite team that you grew he can up still watching. be a piece of shit he is a piece of shit but the thing is like you there are some pieces of shit you root for there's like there's a there's like take for instance tony soprano on the sopranos the hbo show he was absolutely an anti-hero he was a sadistic fuck who at the end of the day you were rooting for and it was kind of weird now i ain't saying dan snyder's tony soprano i mean i never seen it well, that's crazy to me. I mean, I know. the amount of people that take that name and do all kinds of things with it, I mean, it's just a really, really prevalent name as far as in society. I would think you would have seen it by now just as how much it's gone through the zeitgeist. Yeah, it's such a good show. Also, I, I just know I just know the ending was nuts, and people don't know what, what happened. So Everybody knows what happened if you watch the show. No. It's, it's a good binge watch. You need, um, like, a full week vacation, though. You know who else had a, a like a full week vacation? Who did? Michael Thomas. Yeah. Um, did you hear what happened to him? What is that? I saw his tweet. Okay, so he was coming back to play on Monday night versus the Chargers, but the last practice, I think it was the last practice, he got into a fight with the cornerback, and the cornerback was not suspended but they held Michael Thomas out for the game. And then um, there is some language in his contract talking about like guaranteed money. The same thing that happened with, uh, with AB when with us, that's why we like uh, cut him or whatever. Right. Um, and apparently like there's, there's confusion as to if they actually suspended him. You know what I mean? Because if that happens, then his guaranteed money is voided. Um, mm. and, um, Sean Payton came out and talking about how, like, he disrespected coaches and all this other stuff. Um, so, I mean, he's just like another diva receiver. That's how I look at it. Really? That's, that's all I hear coming out of it is he's like a diva type receiver where, like, he's yelling at coaches. Like, they say the, the thing that makes him great is also the same thing that, um, hinders him which is, like, the ego. 
Do you know who Michael Thomas reminds me of more than probably anybody else in the league? Oh. Ever in the history of the league? Marvin Harrison. And there's a reason. Now, I'm not going Marvin Harrison, shoot him up, Marvin Harrison. I'm saying Marvin Harrison as far as you got a wide receiver that's in the league doing all these special things, and yet when you ever have a list as far as the best wide receivers, this name just happens to be off of it. Even though he doesn't – because he doesn't make as much noise as the other guys. He doesn't do – and the fact is that, like, when you look at New Orleans and you look at that team, you got Drew Brees as the star. He's the guy. And that star is fading fucking fast as all get out. There's – um, Taysom Hill is probably another guy who doesn't deserve it, but he gets a lot of he gets a lot of run. You got Alvin Kamara and you got Michael Thomas, which is this Michael Thomas guy. If you watch the X and O's, you watch football, is a top three receiver in the league, right? But he's never really in that category unless you're talking to a true football head. Anybody's still going to usually have or the somebody same plays head. fantasy football or somebody plays fantasy football and knows how <laughs> special he's been, right? But even with that, even with the fantasy football thing, Michael Thomas is usually that raw receiver that you get. You're kind of like, oh wow, that was good value. Right, because huh? he doesn't just have the name recognition. Maybe it's just his name is too goddamn well, boring. I don't know. No, nah, it's um, I, there. There was another thing that I heard in regards to to this, right? Because if you look at it, um, I think on Monday night, um, Emmanuel Sanders had like twelve catches for however many yards. System right? receiver. That's kind of the stigma that they're trying to place on Michael Thomas now. That because we brought up when we were talking about uh, we I remember a few weeks ago we were talking about uh, Drew Brees and what it is and they had an offense and mm-hmm. I think I made a point to say that they've always kind of had a number one wide receiver but it's not necessarily a guy that was respected across league circles so like sure. Marcus Colston was a yep. number one wide receiver but once again his name was never big and flashy when it came to everything but right. I think the sample size is going to be that there's some guys that go to New Orleans and when they leave New Orleans they're not the same thing the number one case is probably Jimmy Graham. Who left, uh, who left New Orleans and ended up being a shell of himself. Lord knows people can't even – if you put a gun to most people's heads, they're not going to be able to tell you where he plays. Was right. it – was a, it uh, on Bears? Or? He's on Denver. W- was it Bears injuries? Or Denver? Oh, Chicago, rather. Chicago. <laughs> See, <laughs> yeah, I was like uh, – He's there. But was it injuries? No, nah, I don't think – Jimmy, Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham saying, was, didn't he get hurt? He, he has gotten hurt. But um, Jimmy Graham, the main thing that would happen with him is when he went to Seattle, it was a completely different scheme. And yeah, it doing, was a running team. It was a running team, and they were asking him to run block where it right. was he was not that kind of guy. And then he goes to Green Bay, and everybody's like, oh, shit, Jimmy Graham and Aaron Rodgers? And then he – yeah. Forgettable. So, yeah. so just to I, circle back to I, – I read this earlier. So Michael Thomas apparently never actually got suspended. Right. He just got See? fined for conduct detrimental to the team. Um, which doesn't void his guarantees. And I right. think Sean Payton came out and was like, no, 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 no. This, this is fine. He's fine. He still gets his $30 million guaranteed or 20, 28 this or whatever it is. strictly a case of them knowing they need Michael Thomas more than Michael Thomas needs them. Well, you saw how bad they were when he wasn't on the field. Even That's what with, I'm saying. Is the, right, with all those other pieces this like is you Sean, got the Kamara. This is Sean yeah. Payton saying, bad boy, I still love you. Like, it's, it's, it's him doing what he can do to say, hey, you stepped out of line. I'm, I'm going to try to correct this, but you still come on back. Yeah, but there's number love, right? Next, next – yeah, he's – I mean, and Michael Thomas tweeted that he was going to play the next game. Like, and I'm sure – dude, and honestly, like, if you're a wide receiver in practice, you and the cornerback are going to get into it at some point. It's just – it happened. It happened. Yeah, but – You get hit by the same guy enough times, you're going to get back up and want to hit that. All right, ask yourself this question. Do you think that this is the first time that this has happened? Definitely not. And right. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it goes above so and beyond. So I think at that. this point they're just, they're just, they were just tired of it, and they're like, all right, we need to do something. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I hate the diva stigma when it comes to wide receivers. Even though I do think there is a certain level of diva that comes with being a wide receiver, and I think that there's a certain level of diva you kind of yeah. have to have in order to be a wide you receiver. You do because if you have ran like 50 routes and you saw one target. I would be pissed. Like, I have been pissed. I've been angry because I'm running like this, and I'm open. Right. I worked all week for this, and I'm open, and you don't give me the ball, I'm pissed. Right. So I mean, you have, Michael Thomas gets the ball. But, but the thing is, if you, yeah. but if, but if you have that mentality, it starts being a raw receiver, then you have a forgettable name, nobody treats you with respect, and they think you're just a system receiver. Well, like, he doesn't need to talk more because his voice that might is be different. The thing, but see, that's his voice the, is different. I haven't. I've never heard Michael Thomas talk. What? I've never heard Michael Thomas talk. It is not what you think. Like it, it, whatever you think it is, it's not that. 
Also, Once again, you remember like my, you remember like Evan Turner? Yeah, forgettable. No, no, you remember Evan Turner from in basketball, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember his voice? Maybe I don't know. It doesn't ring a bell, so probably not. Wow. All right. So, I'll show you. I'll show you after. Well, once once again, different. look. Once again, you saw about a dude that acts some sort of way. You hear a voice, and then you think something else. Once again, the Marvin Harrison. You yep. thought he was this mom man or guy, and yet he shoot people. Yeah, I mean, I I, I got his jersey. <laughs> like uh, I used to study Marvin. Also, I mean, uh, shit, you're close enough to where he stays. You probably should. Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas have the best. Uh, mouth guards in the league in that they're covered in diamonds and they're cool as shit. Yeah. Every time they score or just when they're running, they're just smiling and it's all glittering. That shit is cool. If I was, if I, at some point I think I'm going to get a grill. Just the bottom one. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. Drew Brees is done and Michael Thomas is to get the fuck out of uh, New Orleans. Probably. I mean, I'm I'm assuming if he keeps having issues, Sean Payton's just going to trade him or Get rid of them or something. Well, you know who else is having issues? The Los Angeles Clippers. But now they just got Tyrone Lue. That's I, that that he was, was my there. prediction. That was my prediction is that Ty Lue is gonna get promoted. Uh, do you think that fixes the Clippers? I think all right, oh, here's Lord. the thing. Oh, here's Lord. the thing. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh, you scot it, you bitch. I'm watching Barcelona play. Oh. My bad. I thought you were talking to me, and I was no, like, "No, no, 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 no." I said you skied it, like, crunchy. <laughs> I didn't know if that's like the new hip thing to say. I don't know what the fuck that means. Yeah, what the fuck is skied? Skied. Skied it. You hit the ball over the goal. Skied it. Yeah, skied it. Skied it. It's like is sked it. <laughs> and it was anyway, a one on one. So make the believe sport, the make believe names and slavery. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Um, I think that if we go back to what we were talking about with Doc Mm -hmm. and how he the blame is on the players but it's also on the coach you can't can't lose three series up three one in the playoffs. Alright question does does that does that three one loss go to Tyloo too? Maybe not the head coach. Okay. Just asking. Shit shit goes shit it goes up? No shit comes down. But in this case it goes up because you can't fire all the players. I think they probably talk to wait. Does a lot? Does a three-one loss go to the players too? Yeah, but you can't fire all the players, which is right. the point that no, we no, made. No, 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 no. I'm saying like when you think of like we brought up this stead of Doc Rivers, no, but it was, like it was losing different. 3-1. It, was, it was different teams though. Yeah, I know that he did, he but, did it with he did it with different players. Like I, if it I was know, the I know that part. Look, I'm thing. not. I'm not. I'm not even like debating that part. I'm saying you know how we put that on Doc Rivers, saying that he lost again, like. Down, I mean, yes. up 3-1. Next right? year, when so, Ty Lue is head coach in the playoff series, if they're up whatever, they're going to look at Kawhi and Paul George as being, this is the same team that blew a 3-1 lead. Like, this is yeah. going to be yeah, – this yeah. is on them. Yeah, but, but I'm saying, is it is – it, do, do they attribute that – like, does Ty Lue get any of that rubbing off on him? No. no. Okay. That's all I was just asking. But Not a show. I, I think – I think they probably went to uh, Kawhi uh, – and we're like, hey, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to shake up here? And they went to Ty Lu, and we're like, you're you're the next guy in line, and probably because they can, Ty Lu can bring other people in. I mean, he's been a good head, uh, an, a good head coach in the past, um, and he knows the system. And obviously, he's a Clippers guy. I don't know if Doc, after what happened, was ever going to be able to be that guy because nobody would let him live down that that up 3-1 loss. Um, I think Doc's going to do really well in Philly. And I think the Clippers still need one more guy. I mean, it's not it's not going to be just Ty Lu. They have to bring in another piece. I don't think anybody can dispute that. Maybe Ty Lue's just the guy Chauncey to bring Bills in another is going. Piece. They need to bring in another piece. Are you talking about a player or a coach? A player. Oh, okay. I thought you meant they, coach. They need, they need their Jimmy Butler, and they just don't have it. And he's out there somewhere. I don't know if they're going to, you know, trade for him. They just – as they're constructed, they'll they'll still not win a championship at this point. Unless Ty Lue can turn one of them into a, a leader as opposed to just a superstar. Right. Which, I mean, it's one of those things where we got to kind of wait and see. But if he can't do I mean, that, if they they're not going to win. Yeah. I mean, if Ty Lue's the guy to bring in another player who's a leader and and – 
give them a better opportunity to win, then great. If not, Ty Lue's just, he got slotted in because he knew the system, he was already there. And like, who else could you possibly hire? Van Gundy? Like, I think that's not, that, I think a the, terrible choice. I think the Ty Lu thing speaks to look. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard don't go to LA unless they approve the head coach they already got in stock. Mm -hmm. Doc. Doc Rivers doesn't get fired from LA without them talking to Kawhi and Paul George. Yeah. He's out. I don't think Kawhi is gonna want some big level rah 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 guys we've described them to come in there and try to run the show. I don't think Kawhi. I don't. I don't think if you're a superstar, you necessarily want that. You don't want somebody that's gonna whip you. You don't want a Tom Coughlin or a Greg Popovich type coming in there and like doing certain things. You want to have your level of freedom, right? Now you also want to be able to win. I don't necessarily know if I trust the Ty Lue deal. Like I've said that I think that. What gets LA off to to reach their full potential is somebody, whether it be another player or a coach, that challenges these guys, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm Ty Lue, if I'm looking at the Ty Lue thing, like Ty Lue has been more of a rah 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 guy than Doc Rivers is, but his championship as a coach is not his; um, it, it's LeBron's. And beyond that, um, <laughs> beyond that, unless you're bringing a Chris Paul or something in there. Ty Lue's not going to stand up or stand down Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. It's just not going to happen. So, I mean, you might have a situation where they looked across a gamut of coaches that would have maybe wanted the job, and Kawhi and them were like, nah, man, I'm not going to do it. Like, we understand what you're doing as far as getting rid of Doc. Let's run it back. Fuck it. Or maybe it's just indecision on fucking Kawhi's part. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it seems like somebody who doesn't necessarily is always completely convicted in what it is he's thinking about doing. That's the free agency deal. So, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think at all that this is enough. Um, I, I think that they need somebody that's going to challenge them. And unless Ty Lue's going to be up in their faces, challenging them to do better, they're going to need another piece. Whether that's Chris Paul or something else, I don't know yet. But this isn't enough. I don't think you could just run it back with the mentality that these guys have had with an inferior coach. It, it's not going to work yeah. that way. I mean, Ty Lue's not, Ty Lue is not as good of a coach as Doc Rivers is. Doc Rivers just couldn't stay there. That's all that is. Fair enough. All right. I mean, if they don't if they don't pick up somebody else, I don't think they're gonna they're not gonna be a championship team next year again. So. All right. So I have a question. Um, I guess I can make this like a weekly thing. So does anybody here want to change their picks? I remember when my picks were. It's Walter. I don't remember either. But. I don't have it in my notes, but it's okay. We'll say that. It could be a weekly thing if you had your notes in front of you. I'm going to bring this segment back. You know, I think I've been thinking about it being a weekly thing. I'm not prepared at all for it to be a weekly thing, but I, you know, it was a good thought. Yeah. But I'm going to have the thought live on the podcast. It's going to go out. And, <laughs> it, wasn't, know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't on my notes. Oh my God. Come on guys. Fuck. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm watching the uh, Louisville Notre Dame game, which is much closer than it should be, considering Notre Dame is the fourth ranked team in the country. Um, yeah, but I mean, if you uh, were to be prepared, I would still say we would go through them all, and I'd stand by because I'm a man of conviction. There we go. If I said it, it's what I said. All right. I That's was actually going to gonna take the exact opposite realm, and anything I was thinking about, I was going to change this week. Yeah, because and last week. <laughs> Yeah, I thought last, this was going to be a recurring bit, so, like, I was prepared to maybe change a few picks, but I guess it's just not in the cards. Isn't it that, like, every pick that you were waffling on last week went the went other the way? Went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I, but I still had the least amount of right picks last week. Anyway, we'll see if we even get all of our games this week. That should be interesting. I think I got it. All I know is my fantasy team. I got it. Jack the bet. I found it. Okay. Uh... Kadeem, who do y'all play this week? The Giants. Okay, yeah, I got it. All right, so first one, Texans, Titans. I am prepared, hoes. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> yeah, right. we're, we're the hoes. We're just, we had to fill, we had to fill all that time. Are like you flipping through a fucking book? Hey, look, it's all, practice. Six -year -old it's all high practice. School girl it's looking all for practice. Homework. It's all practice. It's okay. Oh, I forgot my homework at home. I forgot my homework. I don't oh, know. Here and there. Fucking trapper keeper and shit. Just trying to get rid of it. 
All right. What Texas was the Titans. Thing? Mom they, just doesn't understand me, guys. Sorry. Did Texas I go, Titans. Did I go Texans? Yeah. I'll stand by that. All right. I, I went Titans, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. I'll stick with that one. I'm not waffling. All right. Uh, Ravens, Eagles. Ravens. Ravens. All right. Um, damn it. Barca just lost. Barca Congrats. lost 1-0. Uh, Real Madrid lost 1-0 today, too. Yeah, I saw that. But So it is what it is. Um, we all went Ravens. So yeah. uh, Falcons, Vikings. I said I went Falcons, right? Yep. I forget what I said on that one. All right, who would you go for now if you had to pick? Dalvin Cook's out, so Atlanta. Dalvin Cook is out? I'm still going Vikings. Whatever. Uh, Brown I mean, Steelers. Madison. I like Madison. Brown Steelers. I went Brown. Steelers. I'm riding sticking the, with it. Riding the Brown train. I don't think that. the Steelers lose to Cleveland this year. Uh, Bengals, Colts. Did I go Bengals? Nope. Am I Colts? Smart. Yep. I was like, I, I, I went Joe Burrow last week. I can't do it two weeks in a row. I don't know who I picked on that one. I would go. You picked the Bengals. Yeah, that's what I was leaning towards. I think Joe Burrow bounces back after a rough game. I mean, he's good. He looks – he's got the – he's got the stuff. Okay. But uh, – Lions-Jags. I said Jags, right? Yep. And the Jags there too. Okay. I got the Lions. Um, Bears-Panthers. Bears. Yep. McCaffrey's back though, by the way. Did I go Panthers? That yeah. is one I was waffling on. So what you gonna do? I don't feel as wa- I don't feel as heavy on the waffle. It's more like a pancake. <laughs> a I crepe. knew that was coming. You got a crepe? Yeah, it's more crepe. Very thin. It. Might even be rolled. Yeah. Little, All right. little little Nutella. Giant Swift. Huh? Giant Swift. I went Swift. I'm sure of that. Okay. Kyle uh, Allen, the savior. Broncos Pats. If it happens, Pats. Pat, so okay. didn't they didn't they just cut Blake Bortles shit? Yeah, Blake Bortles got released. Oh damn. Tough. Bad move. Bad move. Uh Jets Dolphins. Dolphins. Yep. Every day. Well, we all Jets. take the Dolphins. So you stand with Decadine? Yeah, fuck the Jets. They pissing me off. All right. Uh Packers Bucks. Pack. Yep. I went Bucks, right? Yep. Yeah. Standing by that. Tom Brady. Right. Rams Niners. I the went Rams. Rams. We all did. Okay. Uh, Chiefs, Bills. Chiefs. Buffalo. Okay. Fuck the Chiefs. I'm going with the Bills. Uh, Cardinals, Cowboys. Y'all both going Bills? Yeah. I hate the Chiefs. Did I'm I rooting go- against them every week. Did I Did I take the Cowboys? I did, didn't I? Yep. Who's playing? The Cardinals. Yeah, give me the Cardinals. I don't, Andy Dalton, even though I think Andy Dalton's going to have a good game. I think this is a resurgence of Andy Dalton. I'd like it. Not really, but I mean, I'd like it just to create a quarterback controversy in Dallas. I root for chaos. I'm sticking by my Cowboys pick. All right. It's like this controversial joke I used to say. I probably shouldn't say it right now, but I'll say it anyway. This is not what I think now, but it used to be something I said like 10 years ago when I was really just trying to say anything for attention. Anytime the, uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys played each other and everybody would ask me, who am I rooting for? I used to say terrorism. <laughs> That's pretty good. I can't root for these teams. I don't want anything good to happen for them ever. I do feel bad for Dak, but fuck that team. Yeah, it was like uh, when the Eagles were certain they were going to get their first win of the year and they got a tie. That that just that just really makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. It's nice. Isn't it? <laughs> it's nice, it's nice and now I – Look, I'm developing that same hate for the Patriots. It's starting. It's it's good. I love the Pats. I'm I get to spread that out a little bit. All right. Well, the final the final thought. I mean, the final uh, topic for today is all the uh, EPL scores. Uh, Ryan, y'all yeah, played City today. What happened? Oh, uh, we looked bad. It was just it was every one time, zero though. Every time we come off international break, and I think you can see this around the league. There's a lot of ties, red cards, just like sloppy play. It's because they just played like five games in the last two weeks. Like they're tired. Everybody yeah. looked tired. And because we were tired, I mean, we played, our defending was good. But just, right. there was you no. You only gave up one goal, though. Yeah, there was no speed. There's no passion. There was no speed. Our, our midfield 
looked like they were fucking walking in molasses. It was just a bad game. We'll bounce back. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And Thomas Part, oh what a grab! Thomas Party got his uh, or Party, uh, got his got his uh, Premier League debut today. So that How did he look? Slow. But like, I'm glad to see him. You know, on the field with us. He, uh, it was just bad. It was it was boring to watch. So that's Liverpool how you know. Drew with uh, who? Everton. And it was Richarlison got a red card in the 90th minute. I saw. And, and there was then, a bullshit offsides, and Van Dyke's ACL went snap, and he's out for the next eight months. What? Oh, you didn't see that? Yeah, Virgil Van Dyke uh, for Liverpool towards ACL today. Uh, at least those are the reports, and he'll be out for about eight months. Damn, that's tough. He is the best defender in all of the land. That's tough. Yep. Well, heal up, Virgil. Yeah, man. In fast. that game, I'm playing. I'm I'm play for Verona now. You know the um the 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 bit life game I was talking about last week. Yeah, I played fair, for Verona. Fair Verona. That's uh, two teenagers died there. They were in love. Nobody. Yeah, it's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I got 150 euro in the bank, and I'm playing for Verona. I'm like in 150 this euro, just 150 like, million euro. Oh, I was about to say. So you got 174 American. <laughs> Yeah, it's bit like so. Like I went through the entire life progression. Like this guy's name is Zion Bishop. His dad was an NBA great for a few years, and then he's. I think he has dementia now, and I'm playing as the son. Nice. He moved to Monaco, so that when he dies, there's no estate tax. That's tough. That's pretty great, though. You could also. I that say that's tough, and then Ryan's. That's pretty great. <laughs> no, I mean you're. You got to be forward thinking. Everybody dies. You just gotta. You know. Yeah, in this game, I always emigrate to Monaco when I'm old. <laughs> How many lives have you had? So many. There's one family legacy that's like a thousand years old. Like I've lived all of their lives in this family's generation. Like the accumulated wealth was something like I think it was. I think I tapped out at 900 billion. Then before the last guy, uh, before I could transfer to his son, I had him join the Marines, and he got exploded with a landmine. So the entire family legacy came crashing to a halt. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. And I refuse to pay money for the games on my Apple. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not reverting. This is just what happened. So I'm trying to build it back up. All right. Well, uh, final thoughts? Uh, I had one. Skip me. Come back to me. I forget what it was. Go ahead, Kadeem. As I wind down on my quarantine, um, after going out to a bar last Friday, uh, still waiting for test results, still haven't come in yet. Um, even though I took the test a few days ago, they did tell me there was going to be a delay. But I'm actually coming up on the time where it's 14 days since my exposure, so I'm able to go be back home with my family soon anyway. Um, I tell everybody that uh, COVID fatigue is very real. I understand, like I've said in all these episodes, that you're going to want to get back to normal to some degree. But you just got to really, really, really try hard to think about people outside of you and to make sure that you're not putting other people at risk. And it sucks. Um, trust me, you get stuck inside the same place with somebody that you thought you loved. I mean, you do love. It, it gets a little taxing after a period of time. I'm sure James can attest. But um, it's just a matter of, like, you got to do what you need to do to make sure that you're doing your best foot forward for everybody else. And um, do what you can to quarantine where you need to so you can go out there and vote if you haven't voted already because we need to get rid of this administration. We, we really do. Get out there vote. Wouldn't be my final thought without saying fuck Donald Trump in this current administration. Nice. I remember what I was going to say. Uh, as I'm watching the uh, baseball playoffs, um, and I was very hopeful that the Houston Astros would get swept. Uh, they were down three games to nothing. Uh, they are now tied three games to three. I hate the Astros because they're cheating bastards, and this is proof that they didn't have to cheat. They're a good squad. Yeah. But I need Tampa Bay to beat them, and I need Atlanta to not be losing right now. 3-0. Dodgers. Yeah. I fucking hate the Dodgers, too. Same. If it's, if it's Dodgers in Houston, although there would be a lot of balls thrown in and around the heads of the Houston players. So maybe I do want that. 
Uh, we'll come. We'll revisit this next week. Just know the Nats are coming back, baby. This year didn't count. It doesn't. You count. guys, no. You, I don't know. First of all, if we want to talk right. about the Nats, you guys made terrible roster moves, yeah. and people got injured, and then it turns out that you're not really that good of a team. Trust me, as being a Mets fan, I know this it. Sure doesn't good, count. You guys are historically bad. Sure doesn't count. Historically terrible. We don't care about this year. This year doesn't count. Okay. He's still in the record books. I don't have any final thoughts. So is Barry Bonds' home runs. It doesn't mean a million, yeah. you think? And it statistically, does. Barry Bonds is still the best player, all-around player ever to play the game. Yeah. I mean, Ricky Henderson diddled more kids than he had home runs. And um, Did he actually do anything like that? Or are you just, like, putting, like, child molestation on somebody, like, for no reason? No, I'm basing it off the anecdote you told me about how you got your hat. Oh, yeah. What? I ran the bases with Ricky Henderson, and then – Yeah, you got to wow. first base, second wow. base, third base. Wow. Right on. Wow. That's good. That's a good Jesus one. Jesus Christ. That's a good one. That literally has been like a four-month joke. Yeah. This is almost <laughs> as bad as Mauricio's shit. <laughs> I like to take it back. Ricky Hennis is a really good guy, and he does not have any. Yo, what the fuck, bro? There, even though James likes to consistently throw his name under the bus. <clears throat> Damn. Whew. He did some charity shit for me, like as a kid, and then you talk about. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Is that what you call <laughs> it? He boosts your self esteem that much? Charity? It was a charity case. Oh. No, it was can't. chastity. Ch- oh, chastity. chastity case. <sighs> All right, guys. We're going to work on some cars. Terrible. You guys Death Star go boom. Terrible. Emperor Papa Davis out, bitch. Boom. Mm. Le'Veon Bell? Have y'all voted yet? I did. I, did the, I did the joint where they had to send it to me. I just got uh, to send mail it in. Yeah. I, I dropped my absentee ballot off. I got to mail it in. I did that a while ago, though. I'm actually voting on voting now. Nice. No, I, have, I feel like the polling places are going to be mobbed. Yeah, unless you vote in a primarily white area that's well-to-do and vote for Trump, then you're straight, like I will. That's fair. Well, then there Why are no lines. Why wouldn't there, there be are no lines? Because there are never not? any lines there. Because they, they actually put funding towards letting those people vote. Compared to what Dude. you see in those Okay, areas I see where you were going. I was like, I was trying to figure it out. I Dude, was like, the line, mean, but okay. the line for the place that this I went to is a good cold was, It was so the the door for the station is like on the opposite side, so you can't see it from the street, and it was winding down all the way to the front of the building. It had to have been like a thousand people, and they were like, "It's a three hour wait." And I was like, "Can I get one of them where I just write it and then I drop it in the box instead mm-hmm. of going inside?" Yeah, they're like, which sure. Is, which is what you're seeing all across the country. You got lines in Georgia that are ranging like 12, 13 hours. Some people are waiting in line to go vote. Then you got places in like Texas where uh, you got the governor doing everything in his power to shut down voting uh, po- polling places. And he also tried to get it so that the drop off ballot spots were like one per county, something stupid. Yeah, and one county had like nine million people in it or something. I, I read that. Which is all, it's just voter suppression. It's all, it's all voter suppression. So it's like, I'm fortunate enough that I still can vote in an area that the money is going into. And even though I don't know if the precinct that I vote for is going to go Biden compared to Trump, at least you know they're allowing those people to have their civic duty as far as voting, which it should be a national fucking holiday. But I don't mm-hmm. Well, I, I think, I feel like going forward, if this, if this works where you have like the full month to vote and they're, they have these stations open and people know about them, I mean, they, if they're not going to make it a national holiday, just make elections like this. Why not both? Like, to me, it's like we, we're just getting past a Monday where we celebrated Christopher Columbus, who's a genocidal, homicidal maniac. I and didn't we, celebrate that shit. I had to work. Well, I'm saying if you, look on any, if you look on any calendar, it still exists. So I'm saying that it's still a federal holiday. Banks were closed. Didn't we, so if, didn't we change it to Indigenous Peoples Day? That's just it with some both. people. That's, there are some states that have classified Columbus Day as Indigenous Peoples Day. 
Um, there are some people that don't think it's enough. There are some people that don't think that Indigenous Peoples Day on the same day that you had anything to do with Christopher Columbus is even respectful compared to like maybe having another holiday completely for Indigenous people. And then maybe instead of Columbus Day, it's fuck Columbus Day or get rid of the holiday as a whole since it's so close to Election Day and just make that a fucking national holiday. Like I just, the, there, there's so much that's just stupid in the sense of what it is we celebrate and cherish feel- in this country compared to allowing people the right to fucking vote, which is they'll fight over the right to wear a mask in Walmart, but they won't fight for people to have, be able to have their voice. Well, I, I feel like a lot of people don't understand voter suppression unless they see it. Like which is, people can talk about it, but then they're like, well, I got to vote. Well, yeah. You think that, but then the, there's this whole other element, and it's the same thing you see with Black Lives Matter or anything else. Is there's a significant portion of the population, majority white, that doesn't necessarily have anything, or even if they see it, it doesn't register to them yeah, it doesn't something affect- that matters unless it affects them directly. So as many times as I can watch the New York Times videos online of somebody waiting 10 hours to vote, as much as this is not even the first time, when there was the primary uh, a few months ago, I think it was, was it Kentucky, where you, they were trying to close down the polling stations early in their video on that. There's stuff as far as Georgia where Kemp literally stole the election. That's all documented. Nobody cares that they're still getting the right to vote. They don't care about people that are disenfranchised that can't vote. They don't care about people in Florida that have paid what it is they need to as far as all their fines in order to be able to vote, and they've still been removed from all the voter registries. They don't care unless it affects them directly. Wait, and that fines? just speaks to... Mm-hmm. There are fines in a lot of places where if you haven't paid up, for instance, if you've broken a crime, you had parking tickets, what have you, or if you went to jail and you still have fines that you still have to pay back, you're not allowed to vote until you do that. Uh, so, Virginia just overturned all those like a year ago. So. Right, but you still got a lot of states to do it. And a lot of people need to look at all the legislation that got passed after the Voting Rights Act has basically lapsed as far as what it is they've done in Congress. And they haven't done anything. But well, Congress has a, Congress has done nothing for like right. six months. So, so that, that's on both sides of the aisle. They can everybody in Congress can go fuck themselves. Anyway, agreed. You want to count us down?